Another mid-air scare, a United Boeing plane landing without an external panel. It's the latest in a slew of safety incidences across the country. So here are just a few. Let's review. On January 5th, a panel blew out of the side of an Alaska Airlines flight. Then on March 4th, a United plane was forced to turn around after its engine caught on fire. And then that same week on March 7th, uh, a tire flew off another United flight. This was moments after takeoff on uh, moments after takeoff. And then on Monday, uh, a United aircraft was forced to make an emergency landing after a midair fuel leak. Add to this, this external panel falling off of another Boeing flight. We ask what's going on and how can we stop this? Here to discuss is the director for the Foundation of Aviation Safety and former Boeing whistleblower, Ed Pearson. From the beginning, Ed, I, I have been somewhat skeptical of using anecdotal evidence as drawing a larger story to tell that we should consider how safe air flight is and see what's going on. But at this, I have to say, the anecdotal evidence is adding up. There, and it does all seem to all, always come back to Boeing. So what's going on? Well, well, good morning again. Thanks for having me. I think it shows that our system is under pressure. You know, the system is vulnerable. Um, everything needs to work, not just the airplanes, but the operations of the airplanes, the maintenance of the airplanes. We, all of it has to come together. And, and what we've seen the last, you know, certainly the last couple of weeks is that the system is, is really under tremendous pressure. And there's a lot of... Uh, interest in trying to, you know, travel and all that, but we need to be very careful what we're doing. Um, Ten days ago, we met with the head of the FAA, our foundation did, and we wanted to be very direct and didn't want to pull punches, and we, we came out and we, we said, hey, we've identified at least 35 problems that we need to get addressed, and, and, and we need to stop downplaying these safety incidents. That's a real problem. You know, it's a bad attitude to say, hey, you know, these things happen and they're going to, you know, keep happening because those things tend to be um, precursors to accidents. Well, you, but you, so you said the system is overwhelmed, I believe, or it's, it's a, why? What, what's changed with the system? Why is it under any greater pressure now than it has been in the past? There's a lot of reasons. Um, one of the big reasons is there's been a shortage of staffing, right, from the air traffic control centers to the, to the flight crews to the maintenance organizations. That's a real problem. So at a time when, you know, people are trying to fly and airlines are trying to, you know, move people from A to B, um, we're doing it under a lot of stress on employees. And, you know, when people are under stress, just like in the manufacturing side, um, they make mistakes. So, you know, I read this. I, I would love to hear your feedback on this. It says this, this problem when it comes to Boeing in particular seems to at least correlate to going back to their merger with McDonnell Douglas, that what you're talking about is one player who now is somewhat insulated from competition. And when that happens, you sort of have mm. late-term managers who run a corporation who um, are focused on perhaps less successful metrics. This is where you bring in the lawyers with DEI or whatever it may be. But the point is your company loses focus as you lose competition. Do you see any credence in that theory that what's gone on here is Boeing, a dominating force within the industry, is allowed to let its standards lax? Well, I mean, aviation safety is, isn't political, obviously, but what I would say that the um, what's happening is a failure of, of leadership, and it um, starts at the very top. And, you know, I, I think of it as situational leadership. You know, even a brand-new employee say, working in a factory or a mechanic working on, a, on the flight line at an airline, you know, if they see something's wrong, they need to be able to speak up and they need to be able to, you know, comfortably say, hey, this is not safe and we need to stop. And I think what's happening is this focus to get, you know, profits and, and everything. And there's been a lot of talk about this McDonnell Douglas merger. I, I frankly have, I think that's overly simplistic. It's a lot more complicated than that. I mean, that merger occurred in 1997. Um, you know, when I worked at the company, uh, the 10 years I worked there starting in 2008, uh, you know, never heard about that. No, nobody talked about it. So I, I think we need to be honest. We need to be honest with the problems. And, and until we're honest, we're not going to fix these problems. Well, culture so, and leadership are um, something that take a long time to bake into the cake. And you're absolutely right. For anyone who yeah. hasn't worked for a giant organization, culture and leadership dictated all the way down on how people behave because it's how you've set the incentive structures for how one should behave and what someone should do. And I, I'd be surprised if it wasn't playing a role in what we're seeing from Boeing. But Ed Pearson, thanks for being on with us yeah. this morning uh, for this discussion.
I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.